definition of a Christian these days because we live in a what we call a postmodern age we, we're basically there's no standard you make a, your own standard I determine what a Christian is and therefore I'm a Christian you meet people on the street like we went to the Palo Alto station like pastor talked about today we went to the Palo Alto station me and Jimin and him and then we walked around and then we met people and many people say, oh, I'm a Christian. But I haven't gone to church in a long time. Okay, so what does that mean? Can you be a Christian and not go to church for a long time? You meet homeless people, say, God 
bless you. And he goes, God bless you too. I'm a Christian. Can you be a Christian and be an alcoholic and live on the streets? There's a lot of LGBT members who say they're a Christian too. So can you be a Christian and an LGBT? What I want to do in the first message of 2020 is first, we have to correctly identify ourselves. We need to know what we mean when we say we're Christians. The word Christian, if you break up the word Christian, how would you break that up, Daniel? Christ. Okay, Christ and yeah. Ian. <laughs> Christ, Ian, Christian, American. Korean, Mexican, you know, kind of thing. What does this mean? What do you, what does it mean when you say, "Hey, I'm an American"? Okay, you live in America, but there's other people who's who lives in America, but maybe they don't consider themselves American. American Christian. It's people who belong who belong to this. American people who belong to America, who's in America, who's considered part of America. Christian is people who what? Belong to? Christ. Bible clearly states this. People who try to be like Christ are Christians. Understand? When I say I'm a, I'm a Christian, what I'm basically telling people is this. When I tell you I'm a Christian, I'm saying, I'm like a little Christ. I'm somebody who resembles Christ. That's who I am. I am a Christian. I want to be like Christ. The implication of professing yourself a Christian is that you are saying that you desire to be like Christ, or like Christ. You want to live like Christ. Okay? So, here's my question. If you are sitting here and have no desire to be like Christ, are you a Christian? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? If you say, I'm a Christian, and you have no desire to be like Christ, you can be called many things, but I don't think Christian is something that belongs in that category. When you meet people on the street, when you meet people in church, when you talk with your parents, anybody who identifies themselves as a Christian, including me, it's people who say to other people, yes, I belong to Christ, and I want to be like Christ. I'm not there yet, but I'm striving. I have the desire to be like Christ. I want to be in the kingdom of Christ. That's what I mean. If you believe that Christ is God, and that He died for you, you believe it, you have... No doubt that God created this earth, created this universe, you almost know it for a fact. But you still have no desire to be like Christ. You know of God, but you do not know God. As we have talked many times in 2019, that is not someone who is a Christian. If you look at James 2.19, it says this, You believe that there is one God good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. These demons not only believe in the existence of God, these demons know for a fact, fact, that Jesus Christ, I mean, there's no doubt. There's no skepticism. It's a fact they know that Jesus Christ is God. Does that make these demons angels? No, just the knowledge itself is not grant you relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, I guarantee you there are 
at this time, many people in hell who believe that Jesus Christ is God, but who have never wanted to be like Christ. Today's message is for all those who desire to be a true Christian. 2019 January, can you guys all think back to where you were? Jung Jin, were you here last year? This time? No. Maybe? Do you think? You matured in Chris. Okay, don't ask me this question. <laughs> I want all of you to think, including Joyce. Last year, January 1st, 2019, where was I? Where was my spirituality? What was, how much of Christ was I like at that time? And now, one year later, am I any grown up? Am I any more closer to Jesus Christ? Or am I actually, have I actually drifted away from God? Do I still have a desire to be like Christ? Or actually, I'm just indifferent about God. I sit here, but I actually don't really care. You guys are at an age above the age of accountability. Basically, it's an age where they determine, do you know what you're doing? Do you know really good and bad, right and wrong? And I believe all of you do. All of you do know what is truly right, what is truly wrong. All of you are at an age where you understand the Christian message. All of you know that you guys sinned and that God died for you. All of you know. Now, 2020, forget 2019, Corinthians 13 says this, I keep record of no wrong. When God forgives you, it's forgive and forget. When He forgives you, He forgets your past mistakes. It's not like your parents who bring up the things you did from last year. No, God is not like that. He forgets. This year, this first week, I want you to make this count. I really want you guys to change this year. So next year, January of 2021, you'll be sitting here and you can confidently say, you know what, Pastor June? I am more like Christ today than I was one year ago. I have changed. That's what I want to hear from you. So how do you change? We're going to talk about this for the next three, four weeks. Today is the first step. First step to true change is to desire change. Jimin and I talked about this yesterday. Does Jimin actually desire to change? Does he have the deep desire to change for God to be like Christ? Probably what for many of us, forget the achieving change, just desiring change is hard. We have problems just desiring it, let alone achieving it. Why? Why can't you desire it? Why can't you desire it like you want to desire, like my son, he wants to be a pro at this game. He said, Daniel, you have to be pro at being, being like Christ. Second, you could be the pro at that game. Why is it difficult to desire to be like Christ? Anybody want to have a crack at it? Anybody struggling to desire to be like God, like Christ? So you know what, Pastor June? I'm having hard difficulty just desiring to be like Christ because of this. 
Anybody have that? We have problem because of our sin nature. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they want to be like God. They took the, they, as we talked about many a time, when, when we took the fruit of good and evil, knowledge of the good and evil, we determined for ourselves what is good, what is bad, what we want, what we don't want, what we want to do, what we don't want to do. I want to be the God of my life. Desire to change, to be like Christ, means giving that up. I want to stop being the God of my life. I want to stop being the master of life. Instead of determining what is right, what I like, what I don't like, I'm going to leave that to you, Jesus Christ. That's why it's hard. Desiring to change means desiring to give yourself up. If you have no desire to give yourself up, you cannot desire to change. Joyce, can you just give up yourself? Everything you want, it's hard. You can't. Anybody who says yes is fooling themselves. You can't give it up. When I get up, I want to do something. I want to eat something. My, like, I'm sorry to keep on bringing Daniel. <laughs> Daniel gives me breakfast menu. Dad, this morning I want to get that. <laughs> go, go get it now. <laughs> you know, today I want to get the Taco Bell, that, uh, Thing majiki, punch wrap, whatever that thing. I want that now. Okay. We have hard time even just giving up our menus. I want to eat this for dinner. Mom says no. I'm gonna cook that. We have an even hard time doing that. You know, you could see it as it demonstrates in your life. This is clearly demonstrated by our desire to do what we want to do. Even when parents tell you something. When you become a little older, you start asking why. Convince me that you're right. Why? Because I want to do what I want to do. We have a hard time giving up on ourselves. But here's the thing. You must. That's what it means to be a Christian. You don't live for yourself anymore. You can't say, I want to be a Christian, but I want to do what I want to do. Number two, humans in general resist change. And I'm not talking about just your life. I'm talking about your work, school. Psychologists say all change produces fear and anxiety. Moving to a different state, changing schools, changing jobs, changing boyfriends, changing girlfriends. Any change produces fear and anxiety because there's a fear of the unknown. There's a fear of failure. What does it mean to give up on myself? What if I fail? All changes have fear and anxiety. Psychology says all fears produce anger. If we try to force ourselves to change without <coughs> truly desiring, it's going to make us angry. Because we're saying, why do I have to do something that I don't want to do? And it's like you're trying to kill yourself while you're still alive and moving. I don't want to die, but you must die yourself. You try to kill, and you become angry. Lastly, psychologists say that all change produces stress. Because we are comfortable where we are. Because we have to step outside of our comfort level. I'm mentioning this to you because when you want to change, when you desire to change, you will have fear and anxiety. You will become angry sometimes. You will be stressed. And I want you to know that it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just the steps that are necessary to actually realize change. If you say, I want to change, but you have no fear, no anxiety, no stress, no anger, if things help you, Dory, I have to ask, do you really want to change? Are you really changing? Because change will produce things in a human being. 
So when these things happen to you, know that it's okay. Don't be fearful. Don't think there's something wrong with you. I want to say two things as we close. While we have to desire change, we cannot change. While we desire to change, we cannot change. Like Joey said, you can't give up on yourself. It's not easy. Even desiring change in your life requires what? Everybody, can you read what's the title of today's sermon? Everybody together? One, two, three. So who do you need to change? What do you need to change? You need God. You need God's power. If It's not like He doesn't want to help you. It's just that we don't go to Him. So, bringing up Jimmy again. Yesterday we talked, Jimmy wants to change. He wants to have desire to change more. He's been changing. We could tell because the priest is getting better. And his face is a lot more brighter than before. And he's... He looks happier to me, too. He's been changing. But he wants to change even more for God. He wants to even desire even more of Jesus Christ. You have to ask God. We talked about why Jesus had to die. And one of those things, to help us, remember last month? One of the reasons that he died is so he could help us. He lived a life of a perfect human being. He experienced all of the experience that humans experience, all of the temptations, all the testing, all the pains, the heartaches, so He could help us when we go to Him. So, here's the thing. 2020, as we start, I need all of you to want to be like Christ. Because that's what it means to be a Christian. If you're not, you aren't anything but a Christian. And I want you to go to God. We're going to talk about some of the finite things, some of the actual, how do you get there? But number one is desiring. This week, I want you to pray to God. And I say, earnestly, don't just let God tell me change by the night. Earnestly say, God, I really want to change. I want to be like you. Jesus, I want to live like, I want to have the love you have for all these people. I want to love like that. I want patience like you. I want to care for people. I want that. I want it, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. Help me to go to you every single part of my life. That's why you do QT. That's why you pray. That's why you read the Word of God. That's why we do it every single day. Or I ask you to do it every single day. Because it is your oxygen. Without that, you cannot go to God. You cannot go to God. You cannot change. You, you don't change. You are not going to be a Christian. I want you this week to go to God in your prayer and ask God to help you desire to change. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We are starting a brand new year. Brand new decade, in fact. And we want to say, we want to be a true Christian. Somebody who wants to be like Christ. But even the desire is hard because we want what we want and not what you want. Instead of doing what you want us to do, we want you to do what we want you to do. I pray that we would go to you in prayer and ask you to give us the heart to change, to desire you even more, Lord. Because you are a loving God, you're going to answer our prayer when we go to you. We believe that with a solid Amen. And I pray to you, Jesus, I pray to you, our Holy Father, I pray to you, the indwelling Holy Spirit in all of us, help us to desire you more. Help us this week to think about it, to meditate on it, and to stress about it. 
We pray all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.